how did you come to the character of Jerry Dandridge, and what did you like about playing the character? How do I? How did I come? Well, the how script. Did you find it? Oh, uh, the, the script was sent to me uh, by my agent, and uh, as soon as I got it, and I said, "Well, what's it about?" And the guy said, "My agent said it's a vampire movie," and I went, "Oh, okay, vampire movie. I'm an artist." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and and he said, read it, read it. And I sat down and read it, and I remember very specifically, I was sitting, I had a, still have the desk, in fact, an old uh, mahogany roll-top desk that I found, you know, out in Brooklyn somewhere. And uh, I'm sitting at this desk at my apartment in New York, and um, I, as I'm reading, I'm, I'm turning to my wife, and I'm saying, it's really a good script. Very involving, and you know, it was the kind of script you couldn't put down. And when it was, when I finished reading it, I, I turned to her and I said, "You know, I never say never." Uh, and so I called my agent and I said, "You know, this is really a good script. Uh, what's the, what's it going to be like?" And I said, "Well, it's going to be, you know, it's not going to be a big budget movie, um, but it will be." Uh, he said, "I don't know, because it's a first time director." And I went, "Whoa." <laughs> And I said, you know, I'd really like to meet this guy because he wrote it. Tom Holland is the name of the guy who, who wrote it and directed it, and who is now a very close friend of mine. And um, and so I said, I'd like to meet him. And so I flew out to California, and I sat down with Tom and Herb Jaffe, the producer. And he said, look, I know that this is, your, you know, you'd be taking a real sort of chance here doing this movie because you don't know me. I've never directed a movie before was primarily at the time known as a screenwriter. So he said, here's, what I'm, here's, here's how I'm going to shoot the movie. And he literally described the movie from the first frame to the last frame, exactly shot to shot, how he had planned to shoot it. And when he finished, I went, hey man, let's do it. Because it was very clear that Tom knew exactly what he wanted, exactly the tone of the movie, which I think is really important in the sense that those of you who are fans of the movie know that it's... We have a coven of vampires next to um, That it was very clear that he knew exactly the tone he wanted from the movie. Is it possible to... Is this something that's happening from the hotel? Uh, it's just I'd like everybody to be able to hear it. I don't want to shout. Um, and uh, that... Just in terms of the, I mean, as those of you who are fans of the movie know, you know, it's a, it's funny, but it doesn't make fun of the vampire uh, conventions, and it it observes the conventions, but at the same time it tweaks them a little bit. You know, the whole thing with uh, you have to have faith uh, in, when he puts the cross up to, to Jerry thinking that it's going to completely wipe Jerry out and Jerry just says you have to have faith but that's a work which is a slight sort of twist on the whole convention of the vampire not being able to to uh, uh, of the cross being a, an anathema to the, the vampire uh, and also that it was very clear from the beginning that he was going to be collaborative because he knew that if he hired good actors that you know you you don't, you don't, uh, I mean, good coaches, for instance, in sports, I'm a big sports fan. Uh, good coaches are the ones that know how to use the talents of the, of the, of the people who are on their team and know, knows how to meld them together. And very often, he's also somebody who is willing to listen, he or she, is somebody who's willing to listen and to use the things that are offered as part of the package. And during the shooting, Tom was always very open to, if I had an idea about something, to saying, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, uh, let's try it. Um, so from that standpoint, it was probably the best sort of jump, leap of faith I've ever made in the sense that, you know, it was obvious that he knew what he was doing and he, he made good on it. Yeah. Did you have a lot of fun making this movie? Was there any particular part that Cracked you guys up while you were doing it? Nothing that I can think of specifically in no particular story other than the fact that it was fun. We had a great, it's a great group of people. In fact, we still are kind of in touch with each other. Uh, we've had, uh, I think recently, at one of the conventions, we had a reunion of uh, um, me, Bill, 
Ragsdale, Amanda Burse, um, John Stark, Jonathan Stark, who played uh, Billy, the, my sidekick. Uh, Tom Holland was there, the director, writer. Um, and it was like we, you know, we had just seen each other uh, a couple weeks before, and we hadn't all been together for over 20 years. So it was a real sort of convivial, collegial group of people, and we had a great time together. A lot of laughs on the set. Um, you, ha you, you know, you can't take it too seriously when you're doing something like that because it's a fantasy. But at the same time, I mean, one of the reasons why the movie I think was successful is because the characters took their character, their their individual characters, and the situations very seriously. Uh, in fact, one of the things that Tom uh, asked us to do, Tom Holland, the director, was from the very beginning, the first day we sat down to do a read-through, and this doesn't often happen in movies these days, is you have a, we had a read-through and we also had a, like a week of rehearsal, which never happens, um, especially with movies like this, where, you know, it's, hey, you know, it's about the special effects and it's about the, uh, the flying bat and it's about the vampires and it's about the, the blood and the guts. And Tom insisted that everybody sit down and create a biography for their character. Write it out, and then we came in, came in and talked about our biographies. We rehearsed the scenes together for like a week. Uh, he demanded that they build that into the budget. And, and it, was, uh, it was great. It was really a terrific experience in that sense, a work experience. I think it would just be funny with some of the prosthetics you had on. Oh, well, those are not fun. <laughs> uh, my, the final makeup, the very last sort of extreme uh, Nosferatu makeup. My, uh, any of you guys familiar with that movie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, that makeup was modeled on the, the Murnau Nosferatu, uh, original Nosferatu. And um, that makeup, I would, my makeup call was 4 a.m. in the morning and I would be finished at noon. It was eight hours of makeup. Uh, so that's not fun. <laughs> uh, the contacts, contact lenses for the, some of the scenes in which Jerry has those very red eyes were, this was really early on when contacts were just happening and they were made out of plastic, hard plastic, and painted with red paint. So I couldn't wear them for any more than 20 or 30 minutes at a time without be, uh, literally being almost blinded by them. So, uh, fun? <laughs> <coughs> yes? Did you like playing Jack Skellington? Yes, Jack was fun. Jack was, was like fun. I mean, that's totally team. different. Yeah. You know, you're basically was... going into a recording studio and with the director who doing the scene over and over again several times, um, <coughs> and, you know, have, tweaking words, tweaking phrases, um, doing maybe maybe a scene or two at a time, uh, and then going away for six weeks or two months, and then they animate to that, they animate to the voice, uh, and then you come back and you do another scene or two. Uh, so it's a totally different process, kind of fun, but a little more robotic. <laughs>